The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Printing to Prosper. I'm your host, Gina Morton, and today I am going to tell you how to build your house on rock, especially in this crazy hot housing market. So if you've been following me for a few years, you may remember that my husband and I follow Dave Ramsey. So today's episode is going to be about money and it's going to have some Dave Ramsey references. And if you don't, aren't, if you aren't familiar with Dave Ramsey, he's got a wonderful podcast. It's every day he records his radio show and he also puts it up on YouTube and he's written the book Total, Total Money Makeover um, and actually quite a few other books that I can't think of right off the top of my head. But Total Money Makeover is his main, it's the crux of everything he teaches is in that book. Okay. So when we bought our first house, we did not know about Dave Ramsey. So we didn't do everything perfectly. We didn't do everything that I'm going to describe for you today. Um, we did pretty good. We did pretty well. But um, I think if we had done Dave Ramsey's steps in order, it would have been even better. We would have really had a strong foundation that um, would have eliminated a lot of a lot of financial stress in our marriage. Um, and that's, you know, can be very hard on a young family, a young marriage to add money worries on top of that. So let's get to it. When we were married in fall of 2003, my husband moved into my apartment, which was an hour north of here. And so he was commuting an hour to this job. We knew that I was I really wanted to stay home with children. That was always my goal, my always my dream. So we knew that we would buy the house near his job because I would stay home with the kids. But I lived an hour north of here because I moved here first and he was away at war. So when he got out of the war and he um, got officially released from the army, he moved in with me when we got married. So, okay, that's a little backstory. So he was commuting an hour after third shift. So he was exhausted. I was up worried about him every night being exhausted and driving up the highway. So we were pretty desperate to buy a house. And the market of fall of 2003 was very similar to what's going on right now. So right now I know we're not in the market to buy anything, but I'm witnessing in the neighborhood what's happening. The house next door to me sold without even hitting the market. Um, houses are going for so much that like the original owners are like, they're never going to get that. And they get that. And then some, and we're like, what? And we just sit back and watch our Zillow estimates go through the roof. So we're all kind of like just eating popcorn, watching our, watching our Zillow estimates. So it's kind of fun if you're already in the, in the house, but I kind of feel sorry for the people that are trying to buy a house right now. But the the wisdom of Dave Ramsey is timeless, whether it's this crazy market or any market, he will not steer you wrong. And really his ways of teaching money is God's ways. So if you use God's ways of managing your money, he will always bless you way more than you could ever imagine. Okay. So fall of 2003, we were pretty desperate to, to buy a house. We were approved now, remember, I was working, so we had two good salaries going into this. We were approved for $400,000, but I always, always, always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. That was my lifelong dream was to have as many kids as God would give me, and I would stay home and raise them. So we looked for a house based just on my husband's salary. So our absolute top that we were looking at was $200,000. Okay. We saw the houses that were less than 200,000 and nothing was really striking our fancy. So then our realtor did what a lot of realtors do. They take you to one that's just a little bit above your, your price range and you walk through the front door. And if you're like Gina, you burst into tears because you can already see the children and the grandchildren and the Christmas tree and the kids opening Christmas presents. And oh my gosh, like I just saw my whole life flash before my eyes. And I was just instantly smitten with this house. 
So we put in a full price offer and it was 209,000 was the, was the asking price. But we also knew that people had seen it before us. People were coming in after us. Like there was no time to think about it. So we wrote a full price offer for $209,000 and we went to Carabas for dinner. So by the time the, the waitress came to take our orders, the house was already up to $235,000. And this is where you start making concessions based on, you know, the love of really essentially a pile of bricks and mortar and paint, right? I immediately say, I'll work another year. It's okay. We can put off having a family for another year. I love this house. I love this house, Dennis. Okay, my newlywed wife, whatever you want. We go in 235. By the time appetizers come, the house is up to $250,000. And so then I'm like, okay, well, I'll just work part-time. I don't need to be a stay-at-home mom. Do I even like kids? I don't even know if I like kids. Why, do, why are we buying this big house? I don't even, you know what I mean? Like you start thinking all these crazy thoughts because you don't even know what you want. You're just so in love with this house. But I will tell you, the, the baby step 3B that I'm about to describe for you is going to give you this foundation that you will never regret. Here's the baby step 3B. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the wind, the rains, the buffeting of the house. So baby step 3B is this little baby step that's inserted in Dave Ramsey's steps to financial freedom. The very first step is to save $1,000 for your starter emergency fund. Baby step two is to pay off all of your debts. So that's all of those student loans, car payments, maybe a couch that you bought, maybe some money that you owe your brother-in-law, Whatever is not already a mortgage, you are going to pay that off. That can take up to 18 months. The average person that works their baby steps, it takes 18 months to get out of debt. Okay? So keep that in the back of your mind. Then there's baby step three, which is a fully funded emergency fund. So a fully funded emergency fund would come into play if catastrophe hit if you lost all income and you needed to live off of your savings how much do you need so he recommends three to six months of savings that you could absolutely live off of and um, look for another job in that time then there's baby step 3b so um, if you want to buy a house this is where you would save 20 percent to put down on your house and the reason that you wanna put 20% down is to avoid PMI, all right? The second thing Dave Ramsey recommends is that you get yourself a 15 year fixed rate mortgage. So you're not gonna take out a 30 year mortgage so that you're still paying off that thing when your kids are going to college or your, um, you know, your grandkids are coming, okay? You're gonna do a 15 year fixed rate. And all in, your monthly mortgage payment with taxes and mortgage should not be any more than 25% of your monthly take-home pay. Now, this all does not sound like what we are raised to believe. We are raised to like go big or go home and get the house of your dreams and drive the car of your dreams. But that's the world's way. That's not God's way of handling money. And in the Bible where it says, um, the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse because it had been set solidly on rock. If you listen to my first two episodes of this podcast, you know the wind that absolutely rocked our house. First one that you might not know about yet was I was nine months pregnant and I wanted to quit my job to stay home with, with our oldest child, Charlie. But also, my husband had been working a job for about two, two and a half years that he absolutely hated. He was miserable to the point that I was like, should we go back to the army? Like, what should we do? Like, I can't be married to somebody that is so miserable. It is a really long life to hate your job. And so many times, 
people get stuck in jobs because they have locked themselves into a corner financially. And they think, well, I can't quit because I have this huge mortgage, or I can't quit because I have all this debt, or I can't quit because of this or that. And so many times our financial decisions are the, is, is what's driving our life decisions. And so because we didn't get that first house and we walked away at Carabas. we did a little toast and we said we're not going to play this game we are going to wait for the house that God has picked out for us and it came it wasn't a single family home but we lived there for 10 years and because we could afford it so easily when my husband came to me when I was nine months pregnant and he said I hate my job I don't think I can do this anymore and I I was able to say okay what do you want to do? And he was able to walk away and start building the business of his dreams because we had built this foundation. The second wind that came and rocked our family to the core was this, the second, the first two episodes that I was referring to on my podcast was that my second child that was born was born with leukemia. And he was only the 31st case guys. So I had no plans for this child. I mean, you don't dream that your child is not going to be healthy. You assume you're going to come home from the hospital with this bouncing baby boy. And that's not at all what happened. I was transported to a hospital over an hour away from me with my two-year-old son, Charlie. So me, Charlie and Teddy, we all moved to the hospital. And I saw every single day Mothers have to make the decision to either stay with their sick child or go to work. When you build a foundation of stone and you use your money God's ways, he has all this already in the plan. And I could, I could be with Teddy every single day for his four little months that he was with us because we didn't buy that first house. This is what I want for you. I want you to have the financial freedom that comes from building your marriage, your parenthood, your life on a strong foundation, especially a strong foundation of faith that you're going to trust that God has your best interest. His plans for you are so much better than you can ever imagine. You guys, when I left that house, our first house after 10 years, I could never imagine that we would have this life that we have now. Was it the life that we thought? No, no, it wasn't. But right now we're building this patio that if you watch, follow me on Instagram, you see we're doing this patio because we want to host fundraisers. We want to host retreats because when my son died, we, we realized there's more to life than just, you know, accumulating. It's like, we're here for a different purpose. That's our purpose. It might not be yours, but it's ours. It's what my husband and I are called to do. And this house is built for entertaining. It is a, it's a party house. (laughs) And I hope you come one day and join me on a retreat or a gathering where you can meet one another, but that's what God called us to do. And when I spoke to my pastor about buying this house, he said, fill it with children and use it for the greater glory of God. And I never could have imagined sitting in that Carabas that this is where I would live. And this is the life we would have built. And it's so much better than I ever could have planned for myself. So in this crazy hot market, I want you to always remember to do the Dave Ramsey baby steps. If you need more help, I do budget coaching and I love talking budget. I love cheering for people as they work their way through the baby steps. It is very possible. Um, And I will talk more about the baby steps as this podcast progresses. I wish you well. I wish you a 20% down payment. I wish you a 15 year mortgage on a fixed, fixed rate. And I may you fill your home with all the good things that God has in store for you. I will see you on Saturday with my five-minute declutter and um, have a great day.